Good morning, everyone. I hope everybody is warm because it is freezing in my studio. So my studio is my basement and it has lovely concrete walls and a concrete floor and it is snowing beautifully outside, but it is so cold in here. So I hope that you all are nice and warm. All right, so I wanted to do a flip through today of my finished little grungy tall skinny junk journal. I had so much fun making her. Grunge is definitely my favorite medium. I love it. Um, it's I just find so much peace in doing it. So I wanted to go ahead and do this before she goes to her new owner, Mia. Mia um, actually claimed her before she was even finished. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for trusting me, Mia. And I hope she is a blessing to you. And I am going to attempt to pronounce her name. So I came up with the name. I Googled. I wanted something unique for her because she was turning out so unique. And I looked up New Orleans uh, names. I don't know why. That just is what hit my head. So that's what I looked up. And I found this wonderful name. Now the spelling is A-U-R, the little dashes, E-L-I-E. I had to Google the pronunciation of it, and I'll probably still butcher it. So those of you that speak French or know French, I'm sorry. But it is Orielli, or, so it's Or, Oriel. Oh my gosh. Orelli, Orelli, Orelli. Orally, I can't do it with the thing, but it's a beautiful name um, and it means golden. Um, I, I just loved it because when I did a little research on it, it's actually, it was a popular name in the late 1700s, early 1800s, but it never really caught on. And um, so it's considered a forgotten name. And I personally love all things forgotten. I think that nothing should be uh, cast away or forgotten, and so it just seemed to fit her perfect. So, Orly, this is her debut. So, let's go ahead and open. So, this beautiful sari silk is from Sheila over at Boho Daydreams. You can contact her. She has the most fabulous sari silks, laces. Um, Indian textiles, I'm telling you, you just got to hook up with Sheila. What I wanted to try my hand at, as you all know, Lori B. from Grungy Girl, she's like my, one of my favorite artists, um, but she and um, Georgina over at Damsel and Lace, they both do these really beautiful um, like aprons that go around um, the journals. Um, and I kind of wanted to do something like that but make it my own at the same time. And so, <clears throat> excuse me. So what I did is I took a cereal box and I cut out like what would be a tag shape. And then I just sewed um, some beautiful vintage fabric that I had on it, as you can see, and I grunged it all up and then I used some of these doilies that I had. Um, this is just a piece of regular cotton material that I got at Walmart and I grunged it out and then I had these beautiful doilies and I'm pretty sure I got this from Geor uh, Georgina too at Damsels and Lace. If you um, want to ever get one of her packages, which I'm telling you they are fantastic, you do have to go onto her Facebook group and you will need to uh, message her to get on her list because they're fantastic. Um, and so I just basically layered all of those pieces up and then I sewed it on here. This is a wonderful uh, stick pin that is from Sheila. She makes these, they're fantastic. I continue to try to make them. My bead work is not great yet um, because I don't practice enough. Um, but she does fabulous and when I do stick pins, I literally like glue my fingers together because that is. And here is the wonderful picture and doesn't she just look like an Oriel? Doesn't she? Like she's golden and she is fantastic. 
I use a kit from Cheryl Francis Art. It is called A Painted Picture of a Girl. I actually printed out like three of her kits and I did the these uh, young girls to go on my art journal actually, but she was just saying, please, please use me. And I used her grungy kit. So that is the cover that goes on it. And of course, more Sheila, Sheila beads, Sheila beads. These are the ones she made. She also does sell these too. So they are just fantastic. I highly recommend them. Okay, so let me get into the journal itself. And then again, this is her, uh, Cheryl Francis Art has this grungy kit. And I just pulled some of my vintage um, laces and hankies and different doilies that I had. And so let's get into our, and so then the front page right here, and I think, I can't remember who I got this from. So it's either uh, the girls over at uh, Two Sisters Jam or it's Vanessa Clemens. So forgive me that I did do flip throughs of everybody's stuff because I am so forgetful. But this is a processed foods credit. I just thought that was fantastic. I, um, I'm a horrible seamstress. I'm getting better. Um, so I have a lot of torn up threads. And so I have this big bag that I just put them in. And then that's what I use behind because I love that look. This is a journal. It says this journal belongs to and just a little tag that came with the kit. This is some more of the vintage material and some, I had just scraps of this lane I had torn. Um, I believe that this was a curtain. I could be wrong though, but I have pieces of it. This is just old scrapbooking paper because I am determined that this is the year I am going to use up. I have a box of scraps literally under my, a big box, not a little box, like a big box of scraps. And I am trying very hard to use those up. And then this is Graduate Exercise Illinois College of Law. Um, this is just an old business card. It also has writing on it. It is super, super cool. So I thought that that would just be neat. Mia, of course, can put anything she wants in here. This is just from a book I found at a secondhand store that um, had some Arabic writing. And it was like a storybook, so I thought that was cool. This is just some uh, the coffee dyed paper that I did this summer, and that is the technique I told you where I literally just throw in just a huge stack of paper into a bin, and I had used the same bin to uh, dye with uh, regular dyes, and so it came out with this wonderful hue, and so I just loved it. This is a page that is um, from the kit. And I just sewed that and backed it onto some coffee dye. Again, I can't remember where this wonderful piece of vintage stuff came, but it will be from the people that I mentioned earlier. This is from an old magazine that I have. Um, I have been able to find some old magazines on my trips with my fabulous friend Ricky. Um, and then just, I literally, if we are out of town long enough and we're not stuck in the doctor's office, then... I um, try to hit every uh, thrift store, and, and you'd be surprised. Every now and then, you will hit the jackpot and find some old vintage magazines. On this, this was actually a paper bag um, that was filled with silverware at one of the many restaurants we have been at during our trips. I am going to, um, I am going to turn on the camera. I can't promise how it'll be. Do a tutorial. I'm going to play around with some ink, some watercolors, and so that's why this is empty. Um, so I'm going to put like a little journaling card in there. And then these are just cute little journaling um, things. Well, they're not even journaling things. I use these for mixed media, but I thought Mia could use those. This is just um, watercolor paper that I had coffee dyed and just put in. This is paper from the kit. This is actually a photocopy of some jelly prints uh, that I had made uh, last summer. I was playing around. I love grunge. So I wanted to see um, what I could do and how I could make it. And they came out really good, you know, if you love grunge. And um, so I photocopied them so I could use it. So that's what that paper is. This is just a paper bag that I had that I put in and I just sliced it. Uh, this is actually a track. My husband um, actually runs a ministry from our church 
um, that he goes out and witnesses to. And this was one of the tracks. And we ordered um, a ton of them for our little town, but we didn't get them on time um, for the coronation. Um, so we literally had, I think, like 400 of them. And while my husband handed out, I think, 200, there was no way I was throwing these away. A, it is fabulous paper, and I never throw away paper, and it has a wonderful message of the gospel. So these go in all my journals now because I love them. And then this is some more of that uh, book from that Arabian book that I had, or Arabic book. This is one of the Painted Ladies. She is so wonderful. I just love her look. I can't wait. I'm going to be doing some of this, taking these images and putting them in my art book and playing around with that. This is an old journal page. This I actually wound up adding because this came from my journal from Grunge Girl Lori B. Um, and so I wanted to share a little bit of the packaging that she had sent to me. This came from the kit as well. Then again, on uh, Vanessa's group, um, over on Facebook, uh, is it, it's Junk Journal, Junk Journal Junction. She is doing uh, these uh, challenges, and she wanted ATC cards, was one of the challenges. So I made a, about four grungy -um. I actually put a video on there. And so I took that ATC card, and I just backed it on to some of the old grungy papers I had from another journal and just made some pockets. Then this is an authentic check and it is wonderful. It is from 1883. Oh, I just love it. Mia, you have no idea how hard it is for me to, to give up the vintage, but that is why I buy it. <laughs> so enjoy it. Oh, this is fabulous grungy paper from my friend Ricky that she always sends and blesses me. I just love it. It was perfect for this journal. This is also another one of my grungy papers that I was doodling on. When we travel, I try to take some of these sheets and my pins, and um, then I just doodle um, and make designs, and then it just comes up with this great paper. And then just some coffee dyed paper, more papers from the kit, an old dictionary page, more pictures from, uh, or more from the kit, coffee dyed paper. Then this is our lovely center page, and she is so beautiful. In the camera, when you hold it, the way this folds up, she kind of looks a little elfish. And so it fit her name, since they used to use her name a lot um, in fairy tales, too. Now, so I explained this to Mia as well. I wanted to try something, so I had this bead charm. It went perfect, as you can see, with the colors in this journal. Um, but this journal isn't heavy enough for me to attach, um, like clips and things like that. And I really wanted it to be in the centerpiece. And I thought, well, I could dismantle everything and put it in, but I wanted to try a new technique. And I think that Mia was the perfect candidate for this, because I don't think she's going to get mad at me if if it didn't turn out. So basically, I, there's an attached string here, and I, before I sewed and tied all of this in, I attached the string to it, and then I kind of tied it all together. So I am hoping that it holds together for her. We shall see, because I'm not going to know if I don't try. And again, I thought Mia would be perfect, and she wouldn't be upset with me if it didn't hold, and then I would know. And then more coffee dyed paper. Then this was in the kit for the grunge, tall skinny grunge kit that I got. Um, and so I just made like a little booklet. This is actually when I was doing the ATC cards. Um, this is the paper that I just kind of cleaned off my stencils with. But it just makes wonderful paper that you can make little booklets out of. So that is all that that is. And I just attached that here. Okay, so then this is just more dictionary, more dictionary. Uh, this is from the kit, and so I took these colors, and I wanted to, I'm doing um, two more of these grungy from this kit. I'm going to do two more um, uh, with different ladies, and uh, this matched perfect, so it matched this beautiful uh, vintage hanky that I had. You have no idea. I love grunge, but it was still hard to grunge this up. But that is what I did. I wanted to do a little mixed media card. Um, so I did a lot of painting and waxes. 
um, you can't feel it, but there is a whole lot of texture added to this. This is also from Nikki. I believe it's Ravioli Dreams. She does these amazing um, uh, lace uh, embellishments. Uh, she makes beautiful hearts too. So I attached that because it fit. This is just an old flower. This is also one of Nikki's embellishments is underneath here. It kind of lifts up so that you can see some more of the grunge. And then this was supposed to be my business stamp and my hand shook and that happens. So that kind of gives it like a funky look. So <laughs> nothing is meant to be totally perfect and every now and then when I'm stamping my hand will do that so she's attached there and then I just had old scraps and again this is just my jelly print with these fabulous paper some more of just my coffee dyed coffee dyed so there's a lot of uh, writing space in this journal for me um, this is an old vintage uh, ledger from 1965 that just folds out of course our beautiful girl and then just more from the book these are just some little ephemera pieces that I have on hand it's not vintage it's all new this too is uh, one of my uh, jelly prints that I just photocopied this is another one of the ATC cards uh oh this is a really old old recipe card so we're gonna want to put it on another place for her, but it's an old recipe card from 1931. This is an old a journaling card that I just sewed around, attached the ATC card, just some cool little tags. And I'm thinking I'm gonna put you in another place so you don't fold up. This again is the old magazine, just another journaling card. The pockets came uh, with kit. And again, this is just from my bulk dyeing bulk dyeing. This is an old file folder that actually is kind of the base piece for the whole journal. Um, I can't tell you where the postcard came from, so it could have come from Andrea or Georgina or Vanessa. So, But it's really cool. It's from 1909. This is a die cut that I have to make corner pockets. I just embossed this pocket. I did try to reinforce it with some washi tape because it is such thin paper since it's just coffee dye paper. And so, well, it fit perfectly yesterday. Don't you love when you go to film and then nothing like fits back in perfectly? But when you're putting it together, it just all slides together perfect. So then we're gonna go ahead and put this little recipe card right here. And that is our beautiful Oriel. And so I hope, Mia, that you love her, love her, love her. And I will make her all pretty for you and get her shipped off next week. Before I end, I did want to show you guys the finished of these grungy uh, envelopes that I had made, fabric envelopes. First of all, I want to say thank you. I have gotten such a huge response on these. Um, you guys just bless my heart so much. Thank you. You really, really encouraged me on this. Um, so I will, I am putting out a message today for a techie person so that I can um, link up so that I can start really doing good process videos. Um, and then I will show you how I did these. But let's go ahead and see the finished ones. This one I did not hand sew. It just, this is going to sound weird. I don't mean for it to sound weird, um, but my projects like speak to me. They tell me which direction they want me to go. And I always pray over like all of my um, journals because I don't know who they're going to. And so I want them to bless that person. And um, so I do the same thing on these. And I just say, you know, whoever's going to get it, like what, which, what would they love? And um, so this one just didn't want to be handsome. It just didn't. So this is just a flower that I had gotten from um, Hobby Lobby. They come in packages along with the butterflies did. I'm pretty sure I either got this from Susie. You can find her at Mary Not Martha or Sheila at Boho Daydreams. This again is another piece that came from Nikki um, at Ravioli Dreams. And I'm not sure where I got this embellishment, but it fit this perfect. And then again, I just took some of these and I uh, sewed them on there, but this is sewn. All of them are sewn by the sewing machine because um, I'm just learning to hand sew and I didn't want them to fall apart. But they do have these wonderful little pockets 
as you can see, as you can see. So I wasn't sure which one I should give away, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a giveaway. So when I reach 500 subscribers, I will do another video on that. This is the one I'm going to give away. And I'm going to give this one away because I made it specifically for that giveaway so that I could make a journal and I could tuck a journal in here and then I could fill the inside. So this is the envelope designated to be in the giveaway. So you know. All right, so then here is another one and this one didn't uh, wanna be hand sewn either. This is some amazing, amazing lace that I got from my friend Susie. I actually asked her to do it as I am not allowed to use my oven for paper or material. My husband is convinced that I have fire angels. All because when we first got married, I may or may not have caused a few fires on the stove as I learned to cook. And so now he's just convinced that um, <laughs> I have fire angels. Bless his sweetheart. But this is so wonderful. Look at all this beautiful grunge. Just so beautiful. And this is just what I had thrown coffee on and some dyes on. And again, it just has the pockets and the openings. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these. Um, I haven't decided. I am working on getting my business license. So eventually that is going to happen. Now for the sewn ones. So I did want to try to hand sew. The one thing I have found is when I sew, it really triggers the fibromyalgia. And um, so I'm trying to go a little bit slower and I have, um, I really struggle to sit still and to not finish things that I start. Um, so I'm having to really learn that when the pain kicks in, I have to just set it aside and it just aggravates me. But live and learn, live and learn. So this one has just a uh, doily, and I'm pretty sure these are the doilies that I had just got from Amazon. And then again, I'm just using my scraps of material. I have a huge drawer sitting next to me that is full of just bits and pieces. These are some buttons that I got from Andrea. She, you can uh, find Andrea over at Boho Daydream. She's one of the admins over there. And then when you open it up, I didn't realize I did this. I did say that I'm learning to sew. But I had actually sewn a small piece of this and it closed up what would have been um, the pocket. And then I thought, well, you know, this is how we learn and nothing is ever a waste. Don't ever say, oh my gosh, I messed this up. You could rip out all the stitches. Yeah, that's way more work than I'm doing. This is a perfect pin holder. So a pin will go on this side goodies will go in this side and then as you can see more pockets more pockets more pockets to go now people have been asking me are these um, are they gonna hold things in it and hold up I guess we're gonna find out when I stuffed it it um, it is just fabric um, so it's not gonna be stiff um, if you want them stiff let's see if I can find them I these are just like the beginning stages. Uh, I watched um, Shabby Dabby Doodah and she had done some, this is some vintage squares that I had. And all I did for these, and this will make it more stiff, is I just put Mod Podge on it. So as you can see, I haven't even finished doing these. I had just started playing around with this. I will back this either with more material. I will collage the front more than likely. Um, I'll either back this with paper. I don't know what I'm gonna do, okay? But if you want it stiffer, you could Mod Podge this and it would be stiffer. But for the purposes that I have for this to just hold a journal, hold a little pin, um, to hold different ephemera, do either for giveaways, uh, doing swaps, uh, that was the whole purpose of this. Um, and so I love how they turned out. And this one apparently was everybody's favorite. I just love that. You guys just bless me so much. It really encourages me um, to just keep going, keep just getting out there. Um, though I did want to say, and I will do my very, very best um, to try to remember to link. I always kind of panic a little bit when I'm uploading a video and making sure that I'm putting everything in the right title and yeah, it, it just kind of fries my brain a little, technology. Um, the more I do it, the more comfortable I'll get and the better I'll get with it. 
this is not an original idea. I Googled or I just went on YouTube and I searched fabric envelopes. That's all I did. And there are a million different videos on there. There's tutorials. I really haven't had time to watch a lot of tutorials lately um, because as many of you know, I've, I've been having to help my daughter after surgery. I did, however, run into a lady and I'm going to totally trash her name and I apologize, but I think it's Sigi Tea's Coffee Stains 2. It is S-I-G-I-T-A-S C-O-F-F-E-E-S-T-A-I-N-S dash -E -E 2. I'm going to try to remember to link her. She did not do a tutorial, but she had made um, some of these envelopes, and so she is who inspired me to make these. Um, I did them a little different than hers, but I'm sure you could find a million. I do not think that I came up with this idea. I did not. This is just my version of it. Anyway, so this is a flower that my wonderful friend Ricky sent me. It came in this really big panel. So I don't know if it was a shirt or a blanket or something like that that she had cut up, but she sent it to me and then I coffee dyed it, threw inks on it and just grunged it up. These are some old buttons I had. Again, like I'm into, I, <laughs> I make so many mistakes. I have bags of thread and I refuse to not uh, use it. So again, just one of the uh, crocheted envelopes. And then when you open it up, this one, I really do love this one. She, and this one seems to be the most popular. I was thinking of doing her as a giveaway too, but uh, perhaps, because uh, my first uh, giveaway is going to be for 500 subscribers, uh, so maybe we'll save this one for the 1,000. Because, um, yeah, I'm very optimistic. Even as awful as my filming is right now, I'm very optimistic. And so, um, again, you have all these wonderful little pockets another big pocket and um, so I don't know I have no clue what I'm really doing I'm not committing to anything with these just yet except for the one which we will go ahead and do another video for that as I begin to make um, the next journal I uh, will probably pull out my sketchbook tonight though my next video is um, I thought I would turn you guys on um, again I have no idea what I'm doing but I just feel the need to play around. Do, I haven't been doing my watercolors and my inks and I haven't been painting and I'm just feeling called to do that. Um, it just kind of soothes me and today I can look out my window and it's snowing 